Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Adam Castro. Welcome to Sanctify Studios where I like to create and examine content with a sanctifying and biblical view. I've been focusing heavily on reacting to Christian music lately because I really want to highlight those artists who are being intentional about creating biblical and sanctifying content. So if that's something that you're interested in, then you can do me a huge favor. You can leave this video a thumbs up, you can hit the subscribe button, and you can hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos arrive. Today we're going to be looking at a Christian metal core band called Bloodlines and their new single called Psalm of the Depths. Now Bloodlines is a relatively new band to me. So if it's a new band to you, they're a, uh, four, they're a four piece heavy metalcore band from South Texas spreading the love and hope of Jesus Christ. They're with Face Down Records and they released an EP called Hevel uh, back in 2021. And it made a lot of noise. Actually, a lot of people really, really loved this EP, including me. I really loved the uh, the music, the message. Uh, very saturated, very rich in biblical context. And so I'm really, really looking forward to this new song, especially because there's just not a lot of bands that saturate their music with God's word. So it's really encouraging when I get to see that. And I hope that's what we can expect from this new song. So. Here it is. This is Song of the Depths by Bloodlines. Already some great guitar sounds here. Oh man. Great guitar work here. I love it. Ooh, great double bass pedal work here on the drums. Chris I had there. <laughs> Aggressive vocals, I love it. I like the gold mic too. Ooh, we got a blah. <laughs> Great guitar work. Nice ghost notes there. I really like that uh, subtle synth that's in the background there. Nice transition. Give some space. Great vocals here. Great transition. I love how the clean vocals just kind of snuck in there. Really jammy part right here. I love the water scenes too, by the way. It's adding a lot of emotion to the song. <laughs> right back into it. I love it. Subtle synth is being joined by an electric guitar. Sounding so big and epic, I love it. Great lyrics, great lyrics for this chorus. Ooh, here we go. What do we got? Spaces there and just being filled by those drums. Love it. Great time for the drums to shine. Love it. So good. 
I really liked that song. That was really good. Great use of dynamics. I love how it had different moments of being aggressive, like everything was aggressive, everything was, you know, hard and heavy, and then it had moments where some things were aggressive, like the vocals, but then the music stepped back. Or maybe the music stepped uh, stepped forward and was super aggressive, but the vocals kind of softened up a little bit. I love how just the dynamics were really, really great throughout the whole song. Um, really, really great guitar work. I love that there were so many crazy riffs and they're playing around with the octaves. Um, the drum work was amazing. I love how, especially towards the end, there was a lot of places for the drum, the drums to shine in that big open space that was left um, there for just the little tasteful um, tom hits and cymbal hits and hi-hat hits, you know, and then the double bass, you know, have a little fun there too, like great, great work on the drums. Um, I love the clean vocals sneaking their way in there for, the, for that one section. It was amazing. Yeah, just overall, really, really great song musically. Um, really, it really did have like everything in it. It had aggressive and hard and heavy. It had soft and ambient. And then it had that open space, just like beat down moment where it was giving you the ability to just headbang and enjoy it, you know? Um, so overall, really, really great song musically. And I heard a lot of really, really great lyrics in the song. So we're gonna be looking at the lyrics right now too. In the first section, it says, Ghost, I hear you calling through the waters of the unknown. All rules of logic and knowledge have gone overboard. My vision's blurred and my feet are solid stone. And as I sink, you hold my hand in your own. This is giving me pictures of when Jesus is calling Peter out into the water. And I love that the lyrics here are talking to like the Holy Ghost. And, um, and it's basically saying, like, my feet are solid stone. If I step out into this water, I am going to sink. And yet, it's the Holy Spirit that is holding our hand through this. And it even says here, all rules of logic and knowledge have gone overboard. Um, it reminds me of Colossians 2.8 that says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. It also says in 1 Corinthians 1, 19 through 20, it says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And so that, that, I get that idea here with these lyrics that are talking about how all rules of logic and knowledge have gone overboard. Like this is based off of faith now. This is a this is all dependent on the Holy Spirit. This is all dependent on God. Uh, me making it through uh, through this. And so we go into the next part of the song. It says, "Like waves, they come and go. Like waves, don't let me go. I'm in too deep." Don't let me sink. Echoes, echoes pass me by, letting go of the faithless life of mine. I love, I love this. Um, and I want to pause right here for, for a minute because um, there are so many things in the world right now. There's so many truths. There's so many um, ways of thinking. There's so many religions and there's so many voices that are all like waves just trying to pull you in different directions and it's so hard to fix your eyes on Christ and to fix your eyes on the word of God especially when you might have doubts especially when you um, may question what is real and what is truth and I love that these lyrics are really speaking to that like waves all of these voices all these ideas all these things these truths they all come and go like waves and, it, and we're begging like the Holy Spirit, like, don't let me go. God, don't let me go. Um, as we reach out our hand to, to Christ, just as Peter probably did as he was sinking in the water, like Christ, don't let me go because if you do, I'm going to drown um, in the, in the <laughs> drown in the sea of all of these different things. And um, that makes me think of how 
the Holy Spirit is definitely who we lean on during those times. God is who we lean on during those times. But also, you know, the church as well is who we lean on during those times too. Uh, makes me think of Ephesians 4, 11 through 15, or it says that he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the wisdom of the world, of, you know, you know the, the debaters of this age or any of that stuff. No, it says... Uh, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, right, just like the song is talking about, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, every wind of, uh, you know, it's a, it's a hot word to say indoctrinated these days, Um but uh, indo indoctrination is just what you define as truth. And there's so many winds of truth and people saying that their truth is the truth um, that, there's, that it's like wind. You're being thrown to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We're to lean on these people that God has given these gifts to um, so that we won't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine or by human cunning or by the craftness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint um, with which is it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So the church, the goal of the church isn't to create this hierarchy of power or this hierarchy of um, sanctification where I'm closer to God than you are and I'm a better disciple than you are, any of those things. It's actually to help each other grow so that we're not swayed or deceived by these doctrines of the world or this, the craftiness of human, uh, human reason. And I love that this song is kind of touching on that a little bit that like, hey, it's hard. It's hard when you're in the midst of the ocean and there's waves coming and, um, and you've got to fix your eyes on Christ and you have to really lean into the influence of the Holy Spirit inside of you. So, uh, so I love that it's talking about that. Going on in the song, uh, it says, I'll keep my eyes on you. I know, I know that you'll pull me through. There's an ocean before me and without you, I'm drowning. Just like we were talking about before. And then this next part of the song, I think this is when there was a change in the, uh, in the section of the song. I think this is the clean vocal part. So this may be uh, two perspectives. This might be um, saying, so it says, I bring you my son, look what he's become thrown into the fire the darkness grips his tongue. Um, this could be referring to us, how like God brings us, you know, us into this uh, fire and tests us and darkness grips our tongue. And we are in a place where we're challenged, right? We're, we're tested and we are, um, you know, face to face with the world, face to face with temptation. Or this actually could be from the perspective of God saying, hey, I, I'm bringing you my son. I'm bringing you salvation. I'm bringing you a way out of this, uh, out of this consequence of sin. And um, look what he's become for you. Look what happened to him. Look, look what he has done for you to be able to obtain eternal life and salvation. He was thrown into the fire. The darkness gripped his tongue. Um, you know, he was, he sacrificed so that you could obtain salvation. Um, so it could be either one of those perspectives and either way, um, I think that it's, it's a beautiful contrast either way, because obviously us going through that test, we would fail each and every time yet Christ could go through that same thing and he will succeed because, because he is the fulfillment of the law. He is the, he is God's son and uh, perfect through all of that, the fulfillment of, of everything that is in the Bible. So um, I love that those lyrics could kind of be either or. Um, but then going into this next part of the song, I think the big strong part of the song was when, when the vocalist was saying, even when I don't see you. 
And even when I don't feel you, keep faith. Even when I don't see you and even when I don't feel you, keep faith. I forgot what the verse is, um, but I'll try to bring it up. But even, you know, you know, I don't believe help my unbelief. You know, even when I'm doubting, even when I'm in that place where it's not obvious your presence, it, it doesn't feel like I'm close to you. Keep faith, keep faith. And um, knowing that being in this life, knowing that being in this world is a constant temptation and test in our lives. We're constantly being sanctified. We're constantly being um, tested by, you know, our own flesh is a battle that we have to face. The world is a battle we have to face. The enemy, Satan, is a battle we have to face in this life. Um, I love how the end of this song is saying, just call me out to the waters. Call me out. Um, test my faith, you know, test me and I will reach out to you because me making it through this is all dependent on you anyways. So I love, I love this song. Um, really, really against, I love that bloodlines saturates their songs with references in God's word. Um, and I think it's really telling to the emotion that they put into it. It's real. It's a battle that we all go through. Um, and again, like, I think that the church has to do a better job of being able to identify with that struggle that we all face. Like this isn't just a struggle that the, you know, emo kids who like metalcore music are facing. This is obviously a struggle that even leadership is facing in all sizes of churches, um, big and small mega churches and small local churches. Like this is a battle the temptations of the world, the doctrines of the world that um, are trying to push people to believe in things that are not biblical truth. Um, and, uh, and it can really make us feel like we don't know what truth is or that we can't go to God because we have so much doubt. Um, but we really, really need to rest in the truth of God's word. We need to rest in what we know, even if we don't feel like it's the truth, even if we feel far from God, we have to rest on what we know to be true. And, um, and I love how Hebrews addresses this in Hebrews 10, verses 22 through 25. It says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. In full assurance of our faith. And I know I've said this verse before in, in past videos, but let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, uh, conscious and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, without wavering our confession. For he who promised is faithful. That's why, because he who promised us is faithful. We know that God is faithful. He will be there when we, when we reach out our hand to him. And let us consider Knowing that, knowing that truth, knowing that God is faithful, even when we don't feel like it, even when we feel far away, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Like, recognize that this is a battle that we all face, that we're all in the same ocean. We're all trying to make our way through the same waves. So let's consider how to stir one another up in love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near when Christ returns. Um, guys, we have got to be there for each other. We have got to help each other through this struggle. This is, again, something that every single person, you know, in leadership, in serving, in ministries, even not in ministries, just the people coming in, sitting down in church, even the people who are doubting and have, you know, are in the middle of their deconstruction and maybe they're afraid to go to church. Maybe they're turned off to church in general. Maybe they're turned off to Christianity in general, but they know that there's truth in the Bible or they know that there's a God. Like those are people that we as believers, if they have the Holy Spirit, if they're just in a doubting season or a, a season of feeling far away from God, feeling far away from his people, like we need to not allow um, those you know, even human traditions includes human church traditions too, you know, um, traditions that might push people away, traditions that might exclude people from um, maybe you reaching out to them in love and you wanting to have conversations with them. You don't need to compromise truth to show love. You don't need to compromise truth to 
uh, be kind. You don't need to compromise truth to take the example of God where there is a general grace that God gives both the believer and the non-believer. There's a general grace that God gives all of us to the Christian and the non-Christian. And we can take that same example and just like be kind and want to be there for people in their time of need. Um, and that's what the church should be doing for itself as well. And so if you that know that someone is struggling on the one hand, if you know that someone is struggling, have a conversation with them, be there for them, encourage them in Christ, in, in, uh, in Christ, encourage them in God's word. It says right here, like, let's try to figure out ways to stir up love and good works. Like, let's, let's think about it. Let's actually try. Let's make an effort to encourage each other and build up the body of God, build up the body of Christ. And then on the other hand, if you are someone that's struggling right now, if you're someone who's dealing with stuff and you don't know like who to talk to or, or, you know, who to reach out to, like, honestly, you can reach out here on Sanctify Studios. You can leave a comment below, but go to your church, go to the people that you know are going to encourage you, go to people that you know are going to give you biblical wisdom, go to the people who you know, if that, if you're in a season of joy, that they will be joyous with you. If you're in a season of hurt and pain, that they will hurt and feel that pain with you. Because that's what we're called to do as believers. Like we are called to be there for each other and to build each other up. And I think that that's something that the church really, really struggles with right now. And it's a reason why a lot of people are struggling to keep faith. When we say keep faith, when we say, you know, let us uh, have endurance, you know, endurance in our faith, holding fast to our confession. Part of that, of course, is like remembering that Christ's word that God's word is truth and that the Bible is truth and that we need to be steadfast in our faith. But part of that is also recognizing why we're still here, like what we're called to do as believers. Go therefore and make disciples, um, build up the body of Christ, like be there for one another, stir each other up in love and good works, be an example of what a believer is, glorifying God. Like those are the reasons why we're still here. And it's not to just like, keep funding this building that sings songs together and happens to do good things for the earth. Like that's not what church is supposed to be for. We're supposed to be outreaching. We're supposed to be teaching. We're supposed to be discipling and we're supposed to be supporting our brothers and sisters in Christ. So remember that. And, you know, again, if you're struggling, reach out to somebody, reach out to me. You can reach out to church family, reach out to a friend, but reach out to somebody because it is not worth it to just say, forget these people, and then you end up throwing out truth. You end up sinking. You end up sinking into the waves of the doctrines of the world. You end up sinking into lies, and you end up sinking further and further away from God's hand that is reaching out to you, waiting for you to reach back up to him. So, guys, I hope that um, I hope that those words resonated with you. But Bloodlines, great song. Great, great song. I love it. I love the conversations that the song uh, could spark in uh, in the Christian community. And uh, guys, if you want to support Bloodlines, then go ahead, check out their Instagram, check out their website, go follow them on Spotify, go listen to their music. They've got some really, really great songs, and I'm really looking forward to more music from them. And if you want to support me and what I'm doing here, then you can do me a huge favor. You can leave this video a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel and you can hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when more videos arrive. Guys, I hope that you have a beautiful rest of the day and I will see you in the next video. Take care.